Um, I'm living in Frankfurt, Germany. That is quite a bit away from most of you uh, time zones where you are living in. So here in Frankfurt, it is eight o'clock in the morning. And um, Frankfurt is this beautiful city here. Although uh, at this time we are, uh, in the year we are in autumn. And so the leaves are turning um, yellow and red and it's all foggy and rainy outside. And uh, uh, we get the sense that winter is coming soon. So, um, my name is Robert Martz. I'm an independent consultant. Um, uh, my primary role at the customer sites is usually um, as a, the senior technical architect, and I do have a very database-centric view of the world. I'm an active member of DOAC, which is the German Oracle user group. And um, <clears throat> I'm tweeting from time to time. So this is my Twitter handle here. Um, this is my website, robbie.databee.org, and um, uh, this is an email address. And if you have any questions about anything I'm talking today, please drop me in, uh, a message in Twitter or email me, and I'll do my very best to answer that. Although those slides will be uploaded to my website after the talk, uh, a couple of days after the talk, so you can download the slides from here. I am an Oracle Ace, and the Oracle Ace program isn't a closed club, so you become, uh, can become one too if you like, or probably there's someone you know who, de who deserves to be an Oracle Ace. If so, please go to one of those uh, URLs, the acenomination.oracle.com or the uh, Oracle Ace program website and uh, nominate uh, your candidates. And I will be happy to <coughs> uh, interact and uh, uh, to see if we got new ACEs over the next couple of weeks or months. Good. So why are we here today? Why do I talk about command line interfaces uh, in 2020? Well, um, CLIs aren't that. Um, it's not all about um, uh, moving mouse uh, pointers over the screen. Um, the command line is still there, especially in 2020. Um, you will use them for doing ad hoc changes to, um, or, bet or writing batch scripts. And uh, that those command line interfaces are important. You can see that uh, virtually every cloud provider uh, provides its own CLI, at least uh, all the hyperscalers. So the AWS um, has its own command line interface. It's called AWS. The Azure CLI uh, command line interface is called AZ. Google Cloud SDK has quite a couple of command line interfaces for different purposes. And of course, we are going to talk about the Oracle Cloud infrastructure. And the CLI here is called OCI. Why do I want to script the cloud at all? Well, um, <clears throat> scripting means automation. And uh, this is the um, definition of infrastructure as a code. So the problem is um, building up and tearing down of virtual environments happens very frequently in the cloud because um, some of the changes to your resources in the cloud can be only be done by recreating the resource, meaning tearing it down and building it up again. And uh, at least at the third or the fourth time you're building up, your uh, provisioning the same resource, the same virtual machine or whatever, you're doing uh, shortcuts, uh, abbreviating things and making errors. Um, so provisioning cloud resources by cl clicking in the user interface is very tedious and error prone. So that's my advice is script everything. Use the web interface only for orientation to see what's there, what your options are, and then um, just uh, uh, write down the script. You don't have to, um, to build up the script so that it can be rerun uh, uh, in the first try, but just script it down and try to, to create resources by um, entering or by issuing script commands. Um, because at the end, scripting is automation and documentation at the same time. Um, and this is the definition of software-defined infrastructure. Um, scripting can be done by quite a couple of tools and ways. Um, so choosing the right tool for the right job is very important. And um, let's see what options in terms of scripting we have in the cloud. And this, what I'm talking, uh, what I'm showing you now applies basically to all clouds, not only to the Oracle Cloud, but we are talking to the, uh, the Oracle Cloud today, of course. So the first um, uh, tool I want to show you is, um, or to mention is HashiCorp Terraform. 
HashiCorp is used to, or Terraform is used to plan, define, and provision data center infrastructure. So um, uh, if you want to set up large environments or going to set up environments from, from scratch, Terraform is probably the method of choice or the tool of choice. Um, Terraform claims to provide scripting across all major infrastructure as a service windows. So you write, write your script once and you can deploy it everywhere after that. Um, <clears throat> The, <clears throat> sorry, um, the OCI provider for, um, for Terraform is developed and, ma and maintained by Oracle. So Oracle makes sure that all the major features are there. And uh, it has become, Terraform has become to a de facto standard for scripting cloud resources right now. So um, if you are just um, looked, uh, starting look, even if you're just uh, starting look, uh, looking into a scripting cloud resources, you probably should have heard about Terraform uh, right away. The next, um, uh, the next category of tools are configuration management tools. They are used to change multiple machines to a desired state at once. Um, you can use them to provision cloud resources as well and as you wish. Um, I picked as an example Ansible. Um, Ansible means agentless orchestration and automation. Um, it is developed by Red Hat and open, open source as well. The OCI module is provided by Oracle's, uh, Oracle. So again, Oracle uh, makes sure that all the features are there and uh, working the, uh, as intended. Um, but um, Ansible is only one, uh, uh, one among many configuration management tools. So you can put here Chef, pu uh, Chef Puppet, SaltStack, or whatever you like. So this is a class of uh, configuration tools. And if you're good, Using them and um, you can do your job with it, you're good to go and using one of those tools. And of course, there are, if you don't uh, want, <clears throat> if you want to do it yourself, there are always are the REST API and the software development kits. Um, the REST API is the master, which means all software development kits, command line interfaces, and user, the web user interface are using and relying on the REST API. Um, the REST API provides access to all resources and options that are available in the cloud. If it isn't in the REST API, it basically isn't there in, as a feature in the cloud. Uh, on the downside, using the REST API is more programming than scripting. You have to deal with session state and, um, and figure out if a background jobs are, are finished and all this kind of stuff. So um, if once you are using, start using the REST API, you are much more into programming than into a scripting. Um, to avoid that or to address that, there are software development kits. Um, <clears throat> you can use those software development kits to de develop your own automation solution. And those SDKs encap encapsulate the complexity of the REST API. Um, in terms of programming languages, you have uh, the choice about many options and the OCI is available among others for Java, Python, Ruby, Go and Go. Um, <clears throat> but today we want to talk about the um, OCI command line interface. And I personally using that to make small changes to my cloud environments, writing utility batch scripts. Um, so stuff that is, uh, has to be done quite frequently and <clears throat> and to set up small environments like demos etc. Um, the OCI CLI is based on uh, Python um, and it is available for all major platforms. So whether you're running Mac OS, Unix, Linux, Windows, uh, you're good to go. It is open source, hosted on GitHub and developed and maintained by Oracle. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the Oracle Cloud so that we can see what we are, um, what we can manage with those uh, command line interface. I will make this very short. Um, I took this slide here from the Oracle, from a Oracle marketing slide deck, and it is from a German Oracle marketing slide deck. So there are a couple of German words, uh, words on the slide, but we will make uh, uh, through it together. So that's not, shouldn't be that hard. The foundation of the Oracle cloud is the Oracle region. Um, the Oracle region, <coughs> always consists of um, multiple um, data centers. So this uh, Rechenzentren here is the German word for data center. And uh, in Oracle terms, they are called availability domains. Oracle aims to have um, 
uh, multiple availability domains in every region, although the Oracle Cloud is expanding very fast and there are regions that only have one or two availability domains. Um, <clears throat> in these uh, availability domains, um, there is the physical wire, uh, wiring, the physical network, which is very fast and very good. Uh, on top of that builds up the virtual network um, and uh, the, uh, the services are using the virtual networks and you can build up your stuff using that. So um, the important thing here is um, that we have availability domains. Um, there are a couple of terms we have to, um, uh, we have to talk about because um, the Oracle Cloud is developed is under heavy development right now. The changes came in frequently. And um, the, these changes are developed by multiple teams located on um, different locations all over the globe. And uh, that leads to that uh, there are some confusions and some uh, uh, different uses of the, uh, or different naming uh, for the same thing. One of those things is identity domain tenants and cloud account. And don't be worried, worried whenever you see one of those uh, th uh, three terms here, that means the same thing. It is your cloud, your cloud space. So your cloud account is called uh, uh, identity domain or tenant as well. Um, you need your, um, uh, your identity domain and username and password to log into the web interface. So you need these three pieces of information. And um, just to show you this uh, on the left side here, this is a screenshot um, when I'm getting, when I'm trying to um, sign in directly to the Frankfurt data center. And if I'm uh, signing in through the Oracle website, I'm, um, and it says uh, tenant here. And if I'm trying to sign into my same Oracle Cloud account through the Oracle, um, oracle.com website, uh, the login screen looks something like that here. It says cloud account with identity cloud service. So <clears throat> um, even Oracle, even on the ma main websites, there are used different terms for the same thing. Um, <clears throat> Nevertheless, the, your user and your tenant both have so-called OCIDs, the Oracle Cloud identifiers. And um, these thingies are important. And even Oracle noticed that uh, the cloud identifiers are important. And um, so they, uh, they are so much important that they get their own stencil or their own um, logo. And this is that logo here over there. If you are a little bit fami familiar with the Oracle history, you know that Oracle isn't good at marketing at all. And um, if you look at the other cloud providers, you will see that they have stencils and logos for every tiny bit of their clouds and Oracle doesn't have that much. But someone considered the OCID as a, such an important thing that uh, the OCID at least get its own stencil. So this is that one over here. Good, availability domains. Um, <clears throat> Oracle aims to have um, at least three IDs in every region. I'm well aware that there are uh, regions that only have one availability domain or two at this time, but the aim is to have at least three. Um, your tenant um, get, uh, usually get exactly three availability domains assigned. So even if you are in a region that have more than uh, three data centers or availability domains, you will always get uh, assigned three of those. Um, if there are less than three data centers in your, in your region, then of course there will be less uh, uh, data centers assigned to your account. Um, the number, the uh, uh, availability domain number to data center assignment is randomly generated and uh, represented by a small hash, a four letter hash. And that hash becomes part of your, uh, becomes part of your, um, uh, your cloud region name. So this represents the, um, uh, the assignment between the data center number to your um, uh, availability domains. Good. And finally, we have to talk about compartments. Um, every, cloud to, uh, uh, every cloud resource has to be assigned to a compartment. So compartments are really important as well. On the other hand, they are logical dividers. So you can see them as namespaces or subdomains. You use them for separate your um, or group your cloud pro resources together, say per application or per department. And cloud resources usually stay in their compartment once created. Um, 
Since a couple of months, Oracle added uh, new features and the ability to move um, cloud resources online between compartments, but that is still not true for every resource. And um, uh, a couple of months ago, you need to dist you needed to um, rebuild or uh, a resource if you wanted to to move it between compartments. Um, nowadays, at least for VMs and Oracle databases, you can move them. Um, that wasn't a problem at all because um, those compartments are logical dividers and uh, uh, the resources can see each other. So independently of their compartment being located in, this is not a physical, um, uh, a physical uh, layer, a uh, physical barrier, um, it's just a logical um, divider. Okay, and the compartments got their own stencil as well. So if you're seeing that logo on Oracle Cloud diagrams, you know that that is a compartment. Good. Um, <clears throat> how do we use the command line interface? Well, the basic usage pattern is like this. You say, you type OCI. OCI is the name of the binary and uh, followed by a couple of options. The first option is the service followed by the type, the action, and a couple of more options. For example, if you say OCI compute instance launch, um, compute is the service, so um, instance is the resource type, and launch is the action. So in that case, with this command, you are launching um, a virtual machine. And <clears throat> um, the options will be probably the OCID of the virtual machine you need to provide. The results of this command is in, JSON, uh, is in JSON format by default. And lots of those results come uh, paginated, which means um, Oracle shows you only a couple of results um, at one time. Usually this will be around five. Um, and you can go around that by using dash dash all or dash dash lim limit to um, set the pagination size to a different uh, number. Um, a couple of months ago, again, Oracle changed the default behavior. So most of the comments, um, most of the um, uh, uh, comments will be called with dash dash all by default, um, but not all. And uh, the pagination feature is still there. And we will see that in a demo in a second. Um, using the OCI is very convenient because you have tab completion. So you can press tab at any position for valid columns. So even if you are, um, uh, even if you're in the midst of an option or in, uh, or in service or whatever, just press tab and you will get um, uh, completion options for that. Um, if you are stuck and need help, you can always type um, dash dash help or dash h or dash question mark at any position of your command line and you will get the help uh, that is uh, the head text that is probably most helpful for this part of your command line. Um, the help texts are very good and very understandable, so it's probably worth reading them. Um, and that applies to the documentation as well. Um, the documentation is really awesome, and I'm not kidding here. Um, Oracle did a great job writing this documentation, and if you are downloading the slides and click clicking on those uh, uh, links over here, um, there's, uh, those links will lead you directly to the documentation. So just press here or Google or whatever. And the documentation is really worth reading. Um, every OCI commando um, accepts, um, or virtually every OCI commando uh, 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 accepts uh, global parameters like uh, dash dash CLIRC file um, and other ones. Um, Interesting um, default commandos are dash dash generate full command JSON input. That generates you um, a template JSON file with every, uh, with every possible option in it. So you can save that, open it in a um, editor, fill out, uh, fill out all the um, important um, parameters you like and uh, use that as input to your um, command. Uh, the same applies to complex parameters. So if there are complex parameters available, you can uh, type dash dash generate param JSON input and you will get a template JSON for those parameter values. Um, you can switch the output style between a JSON and a table. A, ta a table will be a text um, um, uh, oriented, oriented format. And you can uh, limit the results by a query 
uh, by default. And these um, limits will be, uh, this query will be uh, done in James, uh, James path query language. And we will set uh, that again in a couple of seconds. So I have um, on the right side, I have the results of um, <clears throat> uh, generate a full command JSON input um, for database. So OCI db create dash dash generate full, um, full command JSON. And you will see those are the options you can provide for, uh, for generating an Oracle database. Um, if you want to generate an Oracle autonomous J uh, database, uh, the next one, you will see that there are quite different options here. Okay, um, these are the services you can manage with the OCI CLI as of uh, one year ago. Um, uh, I won't go over them in, in detail, but you can see you can manage virtually um, every option of the Oracle Cloud with the OCI uh, CLI, and there are frequent updates to the um, command line interface. Um, important um, services are probably the database service um, or the compute service for spinning up or, or for managing virtual machines. Um, but there are other sections as well, for example, the session commands, so for managing your session state. Good, demo time, let's have a look. Um, <clears throat> okay, so this is my, my terminal here and let's um, do something. Um, I'm demoing uh, most of, um, or all, almost all of my demos were using the compartment stuff because uh, the, uh, or the, um, uh, the, IAM stuff because that won't produce any cost uh, at all. This is just metadata. And since I have a paid cloud account here, um, I'm sure I'm not producing any costs. So let's see. OCI, um, EIM, identity management. Um, and now I'm pressing, I'm typing com, pressing tab. Let's see what the OCI is coming up with. Um, okay, compartment. I just got the completion here and let's say list. And this is a JSON formatted list of all compartments um, generated in my, uh, <clears throat> uh, gener uh, available in my uh, cloud account. Um, and uh, this is, at this time, these are all, um, all results, um, but um, I can limit them if I like. Um, and as I mentioned, there are a couple of, um, commands that are paginated by default. But if you do that, you will see a different output. So let's see, let's say limit to two. Um, and now we, I'm getting a JSON list with only two compartments in it and a next page option here. And a warning that uh, the results uh, that, uh, that are, aren't all results here. Uh, if I want to see the next page, all I have to do and I usually will do that in a script, not by uh, using the command line interface. I have to copy and paste the uh, string for the next page here and um, just say dash dash page and provide the string. And then I'm getting the next two compartments from my, in my list here. And again, the, the link to the next list and you can do this on and on and on. Um, if uh, it happens that your uh, output is paginated, you can always uh, say um, <clears throat> dash dash all, oh, sorry, not that way. All, <clears throat> and the, uh, the warning will go away because you get all re uh, resources um, that are, um, uh, you get all resources displayed. Okay, so, um, Um, I'm defining a variable right now with my uh, root container, uh, with my root compartment. Um, so this is the OCID of my root compartment here and I'm defining a variable called RC because I'm using that in the next, um, uh, uh, in the, in the next uh, example. Um, so let's see here. Okay, what have I um, typed here? Um, just go back. Um, so this is the command I'm issued um, um, right here. So OCI uh, identity management compartment create. So I'm creating a fresh compartment. I name it um, Oracle Groundbreakers APEC 2020. Um, I provide a description 
and I have to provide the compartment where this compartment is located in. Remember, every resource has to be located inside a compartment. And by default, there is the root compartment, and this is the, the root compartment is the ID of your tenancy. And Oracle says, okay, I've done that. So this is the result. Here is your fresh compartment. Um, when we are doing that inside a script, so if you want to script that, um, uh, we are probably interested only in the OCID compartment because um, we create a fresh compartment, checking if the uh, compartment was success uh, of the creation uh, or was uh, successful. And after that, we want to work with the ID because uh, we probably want to create other resources like uh, virtual machines or uh, network um, uh, network um, uh, cards or whatever. And we have to provide this. Um, uh, we have to provide the. OCID of this freshly created compartment. And so we have to extract that. How do we do that? Well, um, there is the, uh, there is the uh, query, um, the query option. And this is using the James path uh, syntax. And this is, oops, uh, let's see. So, and so I'm saying a compartment list again, and then dash dash query. And this is uh, the syntax for querying. I want to query the data object inside the JSON result. And I'm searching for the name of my department here, the OG, um, the Oracle Groundbreakers APEC 2020 department. And when I'm saying that, I'm getting returned only um, an, an JSON array. You see that uh, that is an array by the square brackets here. And we will get returned only the um, um, my desired department here, but that's still not good enough because I'm looking for uh, the ID. Um, so what I can do here is just type ID, give me the ID, <clears throat> and now I'm getting uh, now that looks looks way better. But I still have a JSON array uh, with one entry here, <clears throat> and let's see. Uh, what we can do. For example, what I can do now is I can say um, I can use JMS path to um, uh, to re uh, recreate my um, my result set here. So let's see by just saying okay, um, I'm piping that into the next JMS path command and say okay, generate me pl uh, please. Um, Generate me a JSON object here, and by joining um, uh, by joining all elements together, and now I'm getting a little bit different result. And uh, you see the um, <clears throat> square bracket uh, change to curly bracket, so now I have a JSON object. And for the next thing I like to do, I'm switching to the JQ command, and JQ is a Bash utility for dealing with JSON uh, JSON files in the Bash. So let's see what uh, happens if I'm just piping that to JQ. Well, the obvious change is I get a colored output right now. Um, that doesn't help me much inside uh, my script, but you see that JQ is doing something. And if I'm saying, okay, just give me, um, so, um, just getting a little bit, trying to get a little bit smaller with the, uh, with the fonts here, um, let's see. Okay, so <clears throat> JQ, and so okay, just give me my new um, my new field uh, called comp ID. Um, no, my result is only the uh, the value of the comp ID field, and that is nearly good. <clears throat> and, and I'm saying nearly good because um, I still have those double quotes around it. And if I want to use it in a script, I can't. Um, I have to get rid of those double quotes. And luckily for us, the um, developers of JQ um, added an option dash R that is short for raw. Um, and uh, the, um, yeah, there is a space missing here. And that will give us uh, the, <coughs> the raw value back. And um, you see, this is the result, and this is exactly what I'm looking for. So if I'm assigning that to a variable, say um, C is um, 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 if I'm assigning that to a variable, um, and I can say a echo. 
compartment ID $C. <clears throat> you see, um, I have this compartment ID into my, in my variable. And now I can start using that compartment ID in my script. Let's say um, we can do something. I can start creating resources as I wish. But for now, um, we want to clean up. So what I'm saying here is um, um, uh, I just want to delete the compartment. So I'm saying um, compartment delete dash C is the compartment name um, uh, or the compartment OCID and I'm providing it by using uh, my variable here and I say dash dash four. So just do what I say. And <clears throat> off we go. We have a work request created here. So the Oracle Cloud is trying to delete the compartment in the background. Um, just to show you that it's possible to um, do more stuff than the uh, identity management here. Um, oops, sorry. Um, 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 I would like to show you um, the list of the um, um, I like to show you uh, to generate the uh, the list of uh, all available images for creating virtual machines here. Again, I did a little bit query just to just to extract the display name, and uh, this is the list of all available um, of all available images in my region, which is uh, European Union Frankfurt at this time. Okay, um, that's it for the demo right now. Um, let's go on with the slides. Um, let's talk a little bit about administration. Well, if we want to install the OCI CLI, um, we have to meet the pre-requiries. Um, those are easy to meet because the supported operating systems are near uh, virtually any, uh, any operating system, any uh, actual operating system. So whether you are using Mac OS, Linux um, or Windows, you're good to go. All you need to have is a Python installed on your machine. Um, Python versions 2.7.5 and up or 3.5 and up are, are good. Uh, the good thing, if you don't have a Python, this happens usually on Windows machines, the installer is offering you to, uh, to install um, a missing Python for you on the fly. Obviously, you, you need to uh, have access to the Oracle Cloud, so you need an Oracle Cloud account. <clears throat> and, um, uh, and a user with the desired permissions, of course. So if you want to uh, install, let's just see if I can switch. Um, on my second screen to the meeting again. Okay, so um, <clears throat> so if you want to install it, we can just um, copy and paste uh, that commander here. This will go to the cloud. Uh, uh, this will go to the internet. Download the script and execute it. Okay, so probably um, um, please don't tell anyone that I advised you to do to download a script and execute it uh, from the internet without have, having checked it. So the uh, right way will be um, download the script, check if, it's, uh, if it does anything evil and then execute it by hand. On the other hand, um, we all download uh, shareware and stuff from the internet and execute it um, uh, every day. So <clears throat> um, it's up to you. But please, um, if you run into a problem, don't tell your admins that I advised you to do so. Um, installation is very, uh, very easy. You, you will ask a couple of questions about uh, directories. You can just press return or enter uh, to accept the defaults and you're good to go. Finally, if you want to have auto-completion installed, um, <clears throat> the installer adds auto-completion to the bash, um, uh, to, the, to the bash and the um, PowerShell by default. Um, if you are using a different shell, like I am uh, using the uh, C shell, um, you can add auto, uh, in, especially for the C shell, you can add auto load bash comp in it and call comp bash, uh, bash comp in it in your C shell RC file and you are good to go with a command line completion in your C shell as well. Um, installation for Windows looks quite the same. Just open PowerShell as an administrator. You once have to set execution policy remote signed. You have only do this one time per machine. <clears throat> so if you have done it in the past, you don't need to redo it. Um, and then you are calling PowerShell um, with this command line option. It will go to the uh, internet, download a PowerShell script and install it. You can manually install the OCI CLI using uh, the Python packet manager and the um, I won't go through the manual uh, process right now, but it is uh, very straightforward and the documentation is here. Um, 
Um, <clears throat> If you want to upgrade the automatic install, this is uh, very easy as well, because you just have to rerun the uh, installation, um, uh, the in install script and ask yes to override the an existing installation. Um, if you uh, want to upgrade a manual install, you can use the Python package manager pip and just say pip install OCI CLI upgrade. Deinstalling is easy as well. Um, just delete the files from the default directory, uh, from the directories where you have installed it. So the default directories will be uh, your home directory dash lib and dash bin. And if you look into that, you will see OC file names OCI, just delete them. Um, there are a couple of more uh, directories like dot OCI and dot OCI setup if you want to read uh, to delete your um, configuration files as well. Um, in Windows, it's in your user profile. And if you have done a manual install, you can use the Python Packet Manager. Um, it can happen that you are, um, that you <clears throat> um, in, uh, during setup or after setup that you are um, faced with a couple of errors. Um, there is, uh, these are the basic troubleshooting hints from the documentations here. Um, I am not going to read them to you. Um, just I put them here just for reference if you need to uh, look them up. Um, basically, these are the, um, the most um, uh, the, the errors that, are, that, won't uh, that will come up most of the time. Or um, no, most of the time there will be no errors. But if there are, those are, uh, they are among that list. And um, if you find one of those, just leave the text here. Um, the, OCI CLI is open source, so you can contribute to it. Um, if you have um, fixed a bug by yourself or uh, written a new feature, um, go to GitHub and um, open a pull request. And the development team is usually happy to accept your pull request if they are good after review. Um, you can, uh, th there is a notification atom feed as well. So if there are new versions of the OCLI, you will get a notification or um, a new entry in your atom feed and your feed reader. Um, if you have any questions or feedback, go to the usual suspects, go to GitHub for bugs and features requests, Stack Overflow, um, there, uh, the Oracle stuff is really active there. Um, of course, there is the developer tools section in the Oracle Cloud forums. And finally, um, the OCI CLI is a supported Oracle product. So if you have an Oracle Cloud account, you are good to go to use, uh, good to use Oracle support for any questions uh, regarding the OCI CLI. Okay, so how do we set up the um, OCI CLI? Um, <clears throat> um, that's very easy. Um, we, uh, um, uh, we, we generate the, uh, the key pair. If, um, we need to authenticate by saying OCI setup keys. We are uploading only the public key. The private keys never leaves our machine. Uh, we need to gather a couple of information, mainly the tenancy OCID and our user OCID and, the, uh, and our region. Um, and then we can say OCI setup config. Uh, they changed the, the default behavior recently. And if you say OCI setup config, you will be asked for um, if uh, it's, um, the config should generate um, um, a key pair at the end of the process, or if you want to use an already generated key pair. Okay, um, I'm not going to demo that because this is a one hour talk and I don't have um, the time to show you that uh, uh, in detail, but I have, um, I, I did some screenshots here. Um, so this is basically the, uh, uh, the steps. We say OCI set up keys. Um, uh, you will be asked for a passphrase. Um, the, um, and it shows you where the um, keys are written to, the directories, and you're good to go. <clears throat> then you go to your cloud console, find the identity, go to the burger menu, find the identity management um, entry and change users. And there you can add your uh, API key by just copying and pasting it. Uh, only the public key again. Um, and then you have to gather some information again. Um, Administration tenancy details will give you your OCID, the OCID of your root compartment of your tenancy, and the uh, user um, identity, user management uh, will give you the OCID for uh, your user. 
Um, by the way, um, those OCRDs aren't, uh, are showed in a shortened way. So you can press the show button to see the full string or pre just press the copy button in your browser and you will get those string copied to your clipboard. And then you say OCI setup config and it walks you through a couple of questions. So it say it asks for directories. Um, it wants you to, um, to enter the uh, OCI ID and uh, the region and you're good to go. Okay. So I have talked about key pairs um, um, already. Um, the cloud authentication is done via X509 key pairs. Um, the X509 is an internet standard and um, comes in multiple file formats. So we have, for example, .pem, .cer, .crt, .der, .p12. So those are different file formats containing those key pairs or parts of the key pairs. Um, the good thing, uh, all those for file formats are um, text only, so you can convert them by using an editor by hand if you want. Or if you um, want to do the conversion uh, with tools, you can use PuttyGen on Windows or SSH KeyGen or OpenSSL um, and provide the, uh, the one file and um, advise those tools to convert them to the other files. Um, so if you have key pairs available you want to use, you can use your uh, existing key pairs. Um, and the Oracle Cloud needs the PEM format, so the privacy enhanced electronic mail format. And <clears throat> Um, if you have that, you can use it. Um, the important thing, and I can't stress that uh, enough, uh, the private key never leaves your machine. So if uh, it happens that you gave away the private key for um, accidentally or uh, someone copied off your machine, you should consider, uh, consider this key as burned, um, delete it from the cloud account and generate a fresh one. Okay, finally, I have a couple of best practices for you. Um, and we are coming to the end. Um, so um, the OCI CLI, um, or if you are open a cloud account, um, no matter what, uh, uh, what cloud provider, um, it is like opening a new data center uh, to your uh, organization. So um, generating or, or opening a cloud account is adding a data center to your organization. And the OCI CLI is the key to your data center. So please do not put the OCI CLI, especially the key pairs on a laptop um, uh, that leaves your, your organization that someone can forget in a train or whatever. And uh, do not deploy it on virtual machines in your OCI cloud. I'm well aware that there is the Oracle Cloud Console um, uh, that, is a special, um, uh, that is a special virtual machine that you can access from um, the web interface, um, but um, this is a special machine that is secured and uh, maintained by Oracle, so that's probably okay. But you definitely want to limit access to those OCI CLIs. Um, remember, um, you don't grant every employee access to your data centers uh, so that they can bring in virtual machines or pull out or, or, or physical machines or pull out physical machines, and you definitely don't want to do, uh, don't let your employees do that on your cloud data centers. Um, especially because they can generate costs at large scale. Um, my advice, if you take anything from this presentation, it is please script everything. Uh, scripts are automation and documentation at the same time, so it's a good thing. Um, learn how to deal with the JSON output, um, and uh, you probably want to, uh, to look at the James Path query language. Look into tools like JQ, they are very helpful if you're starting scripting. And um, it's probably a good thing to use variables for common parameters, OCIDs, or those page, um, uh, those next page pagination uh, identifiers. Uh, they using those variables um, make, uh, keeps your command line uh, short and maintainable. Uh, and please, finally, please store your scripts without credentials in them, especially when you're using version control. Um, use a GUI keyword or something like that, because um, usually uh, there are way more people that have read access to your version control than you think. And um, uh, version control, the, the uh, nature of version control is that it don't forget anything. So e even if you're checking a new version without the credential, they are still there somewhere. Okay. <clears throat> 
please automate your cloud uh, scripting with the OCR CLI is very convenient and easy. You can press, you can get help at any point. You can press tab to see the uh, valid options. Um, your cloud account is like a new data set center. You want to limit access to it. And the web user interface is only second best for provisioning cloud resources. Please script everything. And if you do that, only the sky, uh, the cloud is the limit. And my final back to you is, please do try this at home and give it a chance. Thank you very much. Cool, thank you so much. That was a very good, very interesting session. I'm sure everybody enjoyed it. Um, just to remind everyone, if there's any questions, you're welcome to put it to the question box. Um, I've just noticed a question come through to the chat box. Um, so the question is, could we do block volume clone using OCI CLI? As far as I know, yes, but I haven't done it myself. Oh, cool, thank you. Um, is there any, any other questions from anyone? Uh, we'll give you a few seconds. While you, while you think about the questions, just to remind you that um, the session is being recorded, so it will be available. And then also there's quite a few other sessions available over the next few days that you can attend. Um, so please do register for those and uh, please provide feedback. And um, yeah, you're welcome to interact with the speaker uh, on the page where you can actually get the recordings as well. Cool, doesn't look like there's any more questions. So thank you so much for your time. I hope everybody had a, has an awesome day and um, yeah, have a good day. Okay, thank you, it was my pleasure. See you then.